What can you tell us about that? I, I haven't heard anything about that, and then I haven't drafted any language or legal counsel on that yet. Um, I think what we're waiting on is, uh, you know, see what a potential court challenge would bring about. So, so you're you're thinking go to uh, you're, you're thinking go through the court route as opposed to the legislative route. Yeah, I think you know as we've had a conversation about non discrimination in the state, uh, you know the the current makeup of the legislature has proven that we're not going to be able to pass legislation that would support ending a ban on marriage equality. Uh, so the check and balances on that would be going through the courts. Do you do you feel like and and this is something and I I'm very much in favor I I, I want to see marriage um, gay marriage legalized in in North Dakota I I think it's I think it's something that's got to happen and and frankly I I think that politically I, I think the winds are blowing in that direction I think it's inevitable um, I, I maybe not immediately but I I think down the road I think it's inevitable here's here's what bothers me because I to me I I think the goal shouldn't just be legalizing it. I, I think the goal should be a degree of acceptance as well. And I worry that if it's done through the courts, you're not going to get that. You're going to make enemies, and we're going to have this issue be divisive in our society for a lot longer than it would be if we engage the democratic process, either through the legislature or a ballot measure. Well, I think people are engaging in the democratic process every day when they're talking to their families and their coworkers, the people they worship with, uh, about who they are. Right. And, and when we put things to a vote on the rights of people based on who they are or who they love, uh, you know, that's, that's part of the democratic process, and that's been played out. But we've already seen, and, and you've demonstrated on your own blog, that, um, you know, we're seeing a, a strong shift in not only throughout the nation, but in North Dakota, of people who are, are supportive of marriage equality. So while, yes, the democratic process is important, and, and, and that would be one route that could be done to, to legalize uh, you know, same-sex marriage in North Dakota, uh, I think the reality of that is that would be, I would think that would almost be more divisive. That's where you're putting communities and families against each other when the courts can determine the constitutionality of whatever the outcome of either vote would be. I, I guess I, I have a problem when I hear you describe that process as as divisive i mean yeah you're in the legislature i mean it, you you know all about it how passionate people are on both sides of the issue and we can respect that people have opposing views that's the reason why we have this process is so that we have a process for settling these matters as opposed to murdering one another and and you're right the courts are another avenue for that but i you know i i i think that sometimes people feel like I, I think it's easier for people to buy into. Okay, well, we had a we had a ballot measure, for instance, and a majority of people passed it, and so that's what it is. And some people are never going to accept it, but I think that's easier right. to accept than a court saying, "Okay, well, now this is the law." Well, I don't know if it's necessarily whether it's the law or not. It's whether or not people have the right to enter into a relationship that's recognized by the government and the rights and responsibilities that come with that recognition. That's what we're talking about when we determine the constitutionality of it. Whether or not the general public says it's okay with them or not, that's a different story. Uh, but when a, when a family is trying to determine whether or not their children have uh, survivor benefits from one parent or the other, uh, that's a responsibility and a right that comes to the government. Because we've gotten, you know, the government has gotten involved with, with marriage and given rights and responsibilities with that. Yeah. 701-293-9000-888-970-9329 if you want to join the program, or you could tweet me at Rob Port. Is there a lawsuit coming to North Dakota over this? I'm fairly confident there's a lawsuit coming. You had said, I'd, I'd read in the media previously, you had said that no plaintiffs have stepped forward yet. I, I assume that plaintiffs are being found? Uh, I've had a number of uh, families throughout North Dakota reach out to me, and, and I know they've been talking to different attorneys, so... That's why I feel fairly confident something will be coming in the near future. Okay, okay. Uh, when when that happens, you know, I, I I guess obviously a suit. You know, even if there is a lawsuit, those things take time. We have the legislature coming up in 2015. Do you think it'd be beneficial to put something before the legislature at the same time? Um, I don't think it would hurt. You know, it's it's just one of the three ways that we can, or four ways we can pass laws in our in our country. So that would be one of them. 
do you do you think the courts are a way to be passing law? Because I, I guess I guess I disagree with that point of view. And and to me, I mean, I, I think the disagreement between you and I, Josh, on this issue is one of process. And I I do worry because ultimately, I mean, that's that's what I want is acceptance for this. I want people to this is just another lifestyle. This is something that happens in our society. You don't have to accept it in your church. You don't have to condone it. Uh, but it's something that's happened and, and it's it's legal. Um, do you, I, 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 so I, I guess to me, process is, is almost as important in this. And, and I hear you saying that, that, you know, the court is one way to make law and I just don't see it that way. I don't see the court's role as making law. I see the court's role as enforcing law. Well, the court's law or role is interpreting law. Interpreting law. And yeah. the constitutionality of that. And, and so when we're putting, you know, the majority is voting on the rights of the minority, you know, while we can have a conversation about process, what's the best? Have to make sure that you know we're determining constitutionality. I think we still have you know we still have families in North Dakota that you know aren't going to have access to the retirement benefits of their partners. Uh, we have families in North Dakota that have to pay five to ten thousand dollars for a second parent adoption because their kid was born in Fargo, whereas if they were born in Moorhead, they'd be legally recognized as a second parent without any additional cost. So it, it comes down to yes, there's a process. There's several processes that could be taken. But the reality of everyday life for people, and, and it was voted on by the majority to determine that families and same-sex relationships don't aren't guaranteed those benefits or those rights and responsibilities. Josh, uh, can you hold on through the break? Cliff's waiting on the line, and I want to make I don't want to do him right before the break so that he's got time to uh, ask his question, and discuss. Can you hold through the break? Certainly. All right, jo- Representative Josh Boucher is a Democrat from the Fargo area. Cliff, we're going to take your call right when we come after this break. I want to make sure you got enough time to uh, get your thoughts in. If you want to join, 701-293-9000-888-970-9329 or tweet me at Rob Port. We'll be back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Rob Port in for J. Thomas, 701-293-9000-888-970-9329. Representative Josh Boucher from Fargo is our guest. The topic right now is gay marriage. Uh, Representative Boucher saying he's pretty confident North Dakota is going to get a legal challenge to uh, existing law, making gay marriage illegal in North Dakota, as many other states have. Holding patiently on the line through the break is Cliff from Fargo. Sorry to make you wait, Cliff, but I wanted to uh, make sure you had enough time to uh, express your point of view. What's on your mind? Yeah. No problem. I'm in the wind. I'll try to keep it short. Um I heard the the term marriage equality. I'm just curious if you if you can define that for me. Uh, Representative Brochet, how do you define it? Well, I would define it as the opportunity for a uh, you know a same gender couple to to get married the same as their heterosexual uh, family and friends get. Okay, so you 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 know, and I did hear you call it you know same sex marriage as well. But you know, I'm just curious. I mean, I I just I guess I don't necessarily have an opinion one way or the other but you know anytime you change a definition you open you know there's other reactions for that action and and you know i just think um you know how do you then i mean we have to consider that we we have to let any any two people then who love each other whether it's a a brother and a sister. Or a, I mean, we open ourselves up to other things. I mean, uh, well, that's, polygamy, things like that. Well, that. That's that's always the argument, and I don't I don't agree with that. I mean, I it's it's the slippery slope argument, and I don't no as a as a thinking rational people, we could say that same sex marriage is okay, but incest is not okay. I mean, we could sure, still sure, but, but, draw but, those lines. Okay, but, yeah, but but I mean, as far as like polygamy, I mean, there's 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 been a history of that. I understand it's illegal, but wouldn't wouldn't that, in a, from a court standpoint, except to open that can of worms? I, I don't have, I don't care if it does or not. I'm just saying it just seems like it would. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I I, I hear that argument all, all the time. Representative Boucher, what are your thoughts? Well, I think you know, uh, in the same case, it would come down to interpretation of law, and so the courts have determined that polygamy uh, is not illegal or recognized in the United States. So. Uh, if people wanted to continue to challenge the uh, previous court decision uh, about same-sex marriage, then, you know, the courts will continue to have that conversation. But what we're looking at here is that two, you know, adult people who are of the right mind are able to enter into a relationship together and receive the same rights and responsibilities as their other family members and friends. Sure. 
Yeah, and, and and again, I, I I'm not I, I agree with that. I mean, that's that's a, a very good argument. I'm just saying, I think you could use that with other things. And if that is the case, I mean, that's when you redefine something. That's what you can, you know, the other things that may happen. So be it. I guess I don't think it's the end of the world either. But I just I don't know how in ten years they're not effectively challenging, you know, a number of things. And that's that's just all. That's just my point. That Cliff, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Uh, Terry from Fargo, you're on next. What's up? Yeah, I was just wondering where where morality comes into the picture with all this. Yeah. Talk. Well, I, I I guess for me, and Representative Boshe can speak for himself, I mean, to me, it's not, you know, our morals are very different. I mean, even, even within the religious community, there are very different views on on lifestyles and how you live your life. I mean, even, even among Christians, there are differing points of view on moral. So I, I think the problem I have with, with the morality argument against same sex marriage is that we very often differ on, on morals and, and some, some morality we do put into law. We put in laws against rape and murder and theft because those things are wrong, uh, and they're immoral and people shouldn't be doing them. And, and that's unambiguous. The problem is, is that when you get to something that's a relationship between a ma- you know two consenting adult people, now it's not a question of because theft is a is a crime against property and and rape is a form of assault against a person. Uh, but two consenting adults choosing to have a relationship t- with one another and calling it marriage and entering into to that sort of a social contract is not that same sort of thing. And if you view it as immoral, well, fine. You can view it as immoral, but that's to me that doesn't that's not a good enough reason to say it has to be illegal. Representative Boucher, your your thoughts. No, I would I would agree with that. Uh, if if people find it immoral, then I guess I would encourage them not to marry someone of the same gender. <laughs> you know, it's 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 we're looking at again two consenting adults entering into a relationship that they would like recognize and have the same responsibilities. Uh, and rights that come with with marriage, uh, you know, we're we've seen the progress be made uh, throughout the country and even here in North Dakota, uh, where I think people, are, you know, they recognize that families are diverse and, and and makeups are different as far as the composition of our family, and so whatever we can do, I think, to support families in those forms, uh, benefit our communities wholeheartedly. Terry, your thoughts? Has, has, there, has there ever been a study done on? on the longevity of these relationships and what happens to the children of these relationships. Well, the, but the problem is if you open that can of worms, you're going to have to look at heterosexual marriage. Cause I, I got a, I got news for you. Uh, straight people aren't doing that great in terms of uh, not getting divorced and, and staying there, keeping their families together. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know that you can make that charge against homosexuals when honestly straights aren't doing that great of a job. Well, and what I can answer is I know that there have been a number of studies done by both outside of universities and independent research that are showing that, you know, families of same-gender couples that enter into uh, parenthood, you know, that's a much more uh, dedicated decision. You you know, you don't necessarily, you have to go adopt or you have to work with surrogates. And so the decision to have a child is much more um, thought out. Uh, similar to foster care and, and adoptive parents. So they find that, for the most part, those families uh, tend to do just as good um, and, in some cases, uh, better in regards to raising children. And that's not to say that, you know, heterosexual couples aren't raising good children. It's just a matter of the, the way in which you become a parent in a same-gender relationship It has much more intentionality behind it. So we're going to turn two thousand years of history. We're going to all of a sudden now we're going to make this the norm. I don't. I don't buy that, Terry. Thank. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I don't buy that because homosexuals have been around as long as humanity's been around, right? And there's been there's even been societies that that welcome it and that allow it. So this idea that we're turning two thousand years of history on its head, I think is uh, is kind of baloney. Terry, thanks for the call. I appreciate it, Representative Boshe. Thank you for your time. Thanks. It's uh, been a good conversation. All right. Rob Port sitting in for Jay Thomas. More straight ahead. State Treasurer Kelly Schmidt, people critical of uh, her hosting former CIA Director David Petraeus in the state. We'll talk it out. More to come straight ahead. Don't go away.